is going on guys it is steven your semi-comprehensive reviewer here and this is the rog ally handheld gaming console since its release this guy has had a lot of attention both good and bad surrounding it and i think now that it's been out for a month it's time to give it a full review in case you were unfamiliar with what the ally is it is basically a part of the new generation of gaming handhelds that have been coming out recently this design and concept was really started by the nintendo switch but the steam deck is what made people truly realize how powerful a gaming handheld can be. But Asus is trying to one-up them with supposedly the most powerful handheld console that can play ally... ally your games? All, all your games. All your games. Certain restrictions apply. However, at the launch of the Ally, there were a lot of bugs and crashes and issues and people complaining of poor performance. And some of these performance issues are real and Asus has sent out a lot of updates and patches to fix these issues. But in my opinion, there's also a huge misunderstanding about what this console is and what it can do. But we're gonna talk about that later in the video for now. Let's jump right into the review of this guy, starting with the design, which can best be described as an ROG-ified Nintendo Switch. It very much has all of the ROG design language tropes. We have our multicolored ROG logos here on the corners, a big ROG logo on the back. The all-white design you think would show dirt really easily, but the kind of plastic actually doesn't. Uh, it also feels pretty durable, not too heavy. Feels pretty comfortable to grip onto. I was able to game with this guy for hours on end without feeling my hands cramp up or feel uh, too uncomfortable. It also doesn't get too hot in the areas where you grip. Overall, the console doesn't get hot at all, but especially not in the areas where you grip and around the buttons. The main areas of heat are going to be right here in the middle where the screen is, as well as on the back where these vents are. We also do get vents here across the top that blow out a lot of air, luckily away from us. Like when we're holding the console in front of us, the air is gonna blow all up towards and away from our face and away from our hands. So while you're holding it, this console does not feel warm at all, which is very impressive. On the back, we have two customizable M uh, paddle buttons, which we can pretty much program to whatever we want. Up top, we have two triggers, two bumpers, we have a power button slash fingerprint reader, which is extremely welcome on this console because of how small the touchscreen is. It's not great for uh, putting in a pin or a password. It's way easier to just tap your finger on that uh, fingerprint reader and open it that way, although you still do sometimes have to put in the pin. Next to that, we have our uh, power indicators. We have our volume up and down button, a USB-C port, which is used for charging, obviously, but also can be used for a docking station or for a display out. Next to that, we do have a custom port for the external GPU that uh, ROG sells, which you can get the external GPU with up to a 4090 in it for $2,000 in case you're interested in... Uh, adding that to the cart with this. Lastly, up here we have our SD card reader for easy expandable storage and a headphone jack for audio. Around the front we have an Xbox controller layout here. So we have our two thumbsticks with RGB rings around them, our uh, ABXY button here, D-pad. We have a window changing button or like kind of an additional options button. Our command center button, which opens up a bunch of quick options for us here. We have our pause menu button as well as our armory crate button that opens the armory crate right up. Below all that, we have these two front-facing speakers, which sound really great for a gaming handheld. And I was even able to just use these speakers when I had the handheld in a docked mode with a monitor. They get really loud, they have a, a nice amount of punch to them, and uh, like I said, they're the best pair of uh, speakers I've seen in a handheld so far. Lastly, sandwiched between all of that, we have this beautiful 7-inch 1080p Full HD display. Asus claims this display is 100% sRGB, can get up to 500 nits, and is 120 frames. So as you can imagine, this display just looks fantastic while gaming. Now, are there going to be a lot of games that will take advantage of that high refresh rate and will run at 120 frames? Probably not, honestly, but uh, going through menus, uh, going through windows and watching videos and even playing lower end games are going to look fantastic on this display. This is easily the main selling point. One of the main selling points, at least for me, is this display. This is what makes this handheld stand out over really any other gaming handheld at the moment is just how good, how bright this looks. You can use this outside, inside. It is eye candy and games look awesome on it. Now, before I get into the gaming performance on this guy, I do want to talk about the overall experience because this is a Windows handheld. There aren't really many other uh, Windows 
devices that are like this. But uh, the Ally is running a full version of Windows 11 Home. So when you open up the box and boot this guy up, it greets you with a Windows 11 setup screen as you go through as if it were a desktop or a laptop, which is a very unusual experience. Um, we also only have the touchscreen to use to navigate through all those menus, which uh, makes you truly realize how poorly optimized Windows still is for touch screens. Now, aside from the touch screen, we also can use the right control stick to move our cursor around uh, and we press down on it to like select or uh, left click. And uh, this is even worse than the touch screen, uh, at least the default configuration Asus gives us. We can switch it luckily. Now Asus's solution to the weirdness and clunkiness of Windows 11 on a device this small was to introduce Armory Crate SE, which is your one-stop shop for all of your games and settings and updates and pretty much everything you need is all in this app. And in concept, that's a really great idea, but in practice, it's okay. It's definitely better than using Windows, but it's not a great solution. So we have our game library here. This shows us all our games. Um, sometimes they have nice artwork for the games. Other times it's just the game's desktop icon. But either way, when you open a game, it's supposed to just go directly to the game. But oftentimes I did have issues where the game would open up the launcher and then I'd have to manually open the game from the launcher. Other times it would open the launcher and then open the game. Other times it wouldn't open the game at all. We also have a, a settings menu here, but it's kind of confusing because the settings menu is basically basically just for us to customize the command center. And then lastly, we have the content section, which has more settings, even though it's called something different. Armory Crate also doesn't always open first when you turn on the device. Oftentimes apps like Steam or Epic will open first and they'll just be sitting there waiting like, hey, you wanna open a game? While well, Armory Crate's just in the background trying to do some update or just taking forever to load. Um, so that's also kind of inconvenient considering this is supposed to be your main menu for everything. But it is all in one place at least. It's all in this app. Everything we can view is right here and it's, it's a lot easier. Now as weird as Windows is on here, the one advantage you do get is of course the ability to download games from a whole bunch of different libraries. So a uh, platform like the Steam Deck or like the Logitech Cloud device or even the Nintendo Switch all have their own set of games that you can download. But for the ROG Ally, you have way more options when it comes to downloading games. We have the Epic Games Launcher, the Xbox Launcher, the Steam Launcher, the EA Launcher. Uh, all of these can all be downloaded here. Plus, we can do emulation way easier since it is a Windows machine. Also, since there is Windows running on here, if you wanted to, you could uh, just do Windows things on here. So if you want to edit an Excel document, watch a YouTube video, a Netflix show, you are more than welcome to do that. And honestly, as a Windows desktop, it's not that bad, as long as you're not trying to do like video editing or anything too crazy on here. You could even roll up to class in this thing and, and uh, edit, you know, take notes or something in Word and, uh, you know, be like the cool kid in the, in the class, just uh, using an ROG ally um, for your notes. Actually, that sounds more like a like a bullying opportunity but uh but yeah for most people they're going to boot up the ally it's going to go straight to armory crate se and that's all they're going to think of it as it's just a mobile handheld gaming console uh for just using like pc games on so let's talk about that gaming performance under the hood we have an amd ryzen z1 soc which is for uh, cpu as well as for graphics we get 16 gigs of lp ddr5 ram as well as a 512 gig nvme ssd it's actually really hard to compare this device like hardware wise to any other windows laptop or desktop just because it has custom internals and like a custom chip made specifically for gaming but also just because it's, it's a handheld and it's it's different than any other device really you can compare it to like compared to a 700 dollars gaming laptop the ally is going to be a lot cooler because it has a better cooling system and it doesn't have like the same kind of hardware as a gaming laptop it's gonna be way easier to game like on the go obviously as well performance is also going to be a little bit better at least at the price range just because you have a smaller screen you're outputting to and because it has that custom chip which is meant specifically for gaming so let's talk about the performance i got on this guy now i was mainly gaming with uh games like csgo rocket league fortnite um, a little bit of gta 5 as well as some older need for speed games and in my experience all of these games ran fantastically on this console i was getting easily between 30 and 60 fps while gaming i 
only had my settings at around low to medium because really that's all you need on the ally just because of its size like this screen is smaller like you don't need to have ultra settings in a game in order to get good quality out of it which is another advantage of this handheld now just for the fun of it i did download hogwarts legacy and call of duty modern warfare and those games understandably ran pretty poorly on here uh just because once again this is like a 700 dollar or like a thousand dollar gaming laptop like equivalent to that those games are not going to run fantastically on a device like that and no surprise they were not able to run very well on here either which leads me to the major misconception around the ally which is that it can play it can play all your games which is uh something that asus has been boasting as you can see here from their uh, marketing page as well as from pretty much all their promotional material and just from talking about the ally they seem to want people to think that this can replace their two thousand dollar gaming pc and run any game in their library which is not true <laughs> this is not going to do that i hate to break it to you but you're not going to be able to run elden ring on here at least at max settings for a very long period of time. And I feel like a lot of people bought the Ally thinking that. A lot of people obviously listened to Asus, they looked at this, saw the performance, saw their marketing, and thought, I can play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 at max settings on here without any issue. And unfortunately, it just can't do that. And if you don't believe me, just look at the reviews on BestBuy.com, who is right now the exclusive seller for the ROG Ally. A lot of people complaining that performance is poor, that there are a lot of issues with the Ally, the fact that it's not running up to their expectations. So a lot of people are going into this thinking that it is going to run games that are extremely powerful, and it just can't do that, unfortunately. Like, this console comes preloaded with a game called Moving Out, which is really the perfect kind of game for this console. It's not super graphics intensive. It doesn't look bad, but it doesn't have like 4K RTX graphics or anything. It's a very simple game where you can kind of just pick it up for like five minutes and put it back down. So I think a lot of people complaining about poor performance and bugs and issues are just trying to push this handheld beyond its limit. Now that being said, there were actually a lot of issues with this handheld at launch, which is why I actually held off on getting it for uh, a few weeks. I just got mine last week after there had already been a significant amount of updates, firmware updates, Windows updates, and driver updates to this console. So now it runs pretty smoothly. I did not really encounter too many game breaking bugs. Like a few times windows would open when I didn't touch on them. I think I had one game crash while using this and then it didn't happen again after a firmware update was released the next day. When I got this console there were at least three firmware updates and about 12 windows updates available so uh, clearly Asus has been working hard to patch the issues on this console and it seems like they've been working. That being said people did claim about a lot of windows scaling issues which I actually did encounter on here. For example, the scaling by default is like 150, but games, for me at least, would always open in the wrong scaled mode. Like, I'd only see the upper left corner of the game I was playing, and then the other four parts were off the screen. It's like the ally thought its screen was like twice as big as it actually was. A lot of people have had issues with like AMD drivers and AMD software, like driver issues where the touchscreen won't work anymore, or the display won't work. A lot of SD card reader issues as well for people who want to use that as their like form of second secondary storage, and just a lot of uh, like weird buggy hardware to software kind of issues. But it seems as if Asus has fixed a lot of those. I didn't encounter any weird driver issues. It seems like those firmware updates were able to fix that. Just still a lot of weird bugs, but I think that just comes with the territory considering this is a Windows hybrid handheld thing. <laughs> Lastly, let's just talk about the battery life since I didn't talk about it yet. So we get about I'd say around two hours, that's like pushing it, but around two hours if you're actively gaming on here. Depends on the game, obviously, but for me, using the games I mentioned earlier, those I was able to run for about two hours. Asus officially does quote about an hour and 43 minutes, which, like I said, is about in line with what I uh, was able to get, which, yeah, is pretty bad. <laughs> um, but, like I said, considering this is a Windows handheld and considering the fact that it gets really good performance on battery life, it's to be expected, honestly. Gaming laptops generally don't have a long battery life either, so that's just the uh, the sad reality of being a gamer. But uh, we do get a really good charger in the box. It is a 65 watt charger and does a really good job of powering up the console, even when you're gaming on it. Like I did mention earlier, you get a little bit of a performance boost. You get turbo mode when it's plugged in. But uh, like it'll power up the console fairly quickly, even when you are gaming on it while it's plugged in. All right, lastly, final thoughts. Should you get 
an ROG ally now that Asus has worked out most of the kinks with this console. I say yes, I recommend this guy. If you wanna go for a gaming, a, like a PC gaming handheld, this is the best one you can go with, in my opinion, even over the Steam Deck, just because of the flexibility you get with the uh, larger game library, uh, the ability to do Windows things on here, which is also pretty cool, uh, the screen, which is amazing. I, I could recap everything, but this is a great handheld. It's the best gaming handheld, I believe, right now. Once again, though, temper your expectations. Don't go into this thing you're going to play Elden Ring at max settings. That's just not possible. I will definitely be using this guy a lot um, whenever I'm gaming on the go. And like I said, I highly recommend getting it if you can get one. Beyond that, though, that pretty much does it for this review. Uh, I will be releasing tutorials on how to fix some of the issues, some of the common issues you see on the ROG Ally on my second channel, Semi-Comprehensive Guide. So uh, be sure to check the link in the description down below if you want to get some of your ROG Ally issues fixed. Also, let me know if you bought an ROG Ally, if you returned your ROG Ally, or if you want to get one now that you've seen this review. Beyond that, though, I've been Steven, your Semi-Comprehensive Reviewer, and be sure to have a wonderful rest of your day.